back to California Cooking. On today's show, I'm checking out a modern Mexican restaurant with a Michelin star chef. Then I'm making a Greek inspired meatball sandwich and Levi and I cooking up one of his favorites, homemade fish sticks with tartar sauce. A new modern Mexican restaurant has just opened in Beverly Hills and they have the most gorgeous outdoor patio where you feel like you've been transported to a Mexican resort. Let's check out Mireme. This is my favorite new restaurant. I love, well, I haven't been to a restaurant since March, but congratulations, you guys. It's beautiful. Yeah, so obviously opening up a restaurant in July in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> you probably have a few gray hairs from that, I would imagine. Was there any time in the process where you thought, okay, let's just hit the pause button and wait? We didn't really have the option to wait. I mean, this was a project that we started over a year ago, and you know, we kind of ended up in the space around January, yeah. and you know, took possession around February or March. Yeah. So, it just was really unfortunate timing. Beverly Hills at night, you've got outside restaurants, you've got a ton of outside seating, has really become. Quite busy. This street particularly, yeah. it gets quite busy at night, yeah, with all the other restaurants and us all together. It's, it's been quite lovely. Well, there's a lot of foot traffic. It almost feels like a European city, which is amazing. And I really hope that out of all this, maybe we all get to keep these outside patios. <laughs> Talk to me about the concept. Mirame. Am I saying it right? You are. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> okay. So how you guys met and how this was born. So I had a crazy idea. I was in a different business altogether. I was in the film business before this. And I had this crazy idea that I wanted to open a restaurant. Just very passionate about the food, uh, the flavors. And I really felt like the concept that I had in my, in my brain was not represented in Southern California, surprisingly. Um, I read about Josh in a cookbook, cold called him. Did you go, who's this guy? Who? Pretty much, that, that's almost exactly what I said. <laughs> but he agreed to meet and we met and shook hands and hugged and here we are. We, we were kind of like thinking of conceptual, you know, thinking of the concept of like what it would look like and you know, the food and everything. I'm like, you know, we agreed like, let's go to Mexico. Like, so, so you we, took a trip. We, we took did. a trip to Mexico City and rented a car and then drove through Puebla and then went to Oaxaca and it was a few weeks and you know just like ate at a bunch of different places uh, met with some artisans well the fact that you two were strangers and then you go on a tour together of Mexico <laughs> was that like immediate bonding was that like sharing a hotel room and getting to know each other really quickly kind of thing I didn't know him that well when we yeah, exactly. when we took off exactly yeah. it was pretty funny how would you even describe your restaurant. We describe it as contemporary Mexican okay. with California sensibility. Oh. Basically allows me to have free reign in the expression. But the, the idea is um, my food is inspired by ingredients and we have an abundance of that here. So like you doing the California sensibility, we don't want, um, like a lot of Mexican food is very heavy and it just weighs you down and you don't feel great afterwards. I want people to feel great. Um, and that's kind of like, our direction now with our cuisine. And I, I see a full stock bar. I would imagine tequila is the drink of choice. And mezcal. And mezcal. Yeah, so our bar um, is comprised of all Mexican distillates. Okay. So everything from the whiskey to the gin to the rum is all Mexican. That had to be a fun part of your tour through Mexico. Terrible. A lot of tasting. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, in the kitchen, um, this is where you do your thing. What are we making? Today we are gonna be making a tuna asada taco. Amazing. Right, and the marinade is basically my grandfather's carne asada ah. recipe that we've just incorporated into okay. sashimi grade albacore tuna. Homemade here with two different types of corn. So we use a blue corn and a red corn and we get these beautiful purple tortillas. We'll take a little bit of the smashed avocado, not guacamole. <laughs> Gorgeous. Lay it down. And then we have a tomatillo salsa here, which we add some fresh tomatillos on top as well. 
So we do like a tomatillo pico de gallo instead of just your standard tomato pico de gallo. Little red onion. Isn't a taco the most perfect food on the planet? A hundred percent. It really is. Anything that you can eat with your hands, we add a little accents to it. So this is fried garlic and fried shallots. We just add a little bit of that, taking a page out of Southern Asian cooking. And because we don't have a wood burning grill. Liquid smoke? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Smoked olive oil. Oh, smoked <laughs> We call it embers oil. Wait, how do you do that? We add activated charcoal to it as no well. No way. Oh, just a little simple cilantro. Gorgeous. This looks so good, you guys. Okay, this I helped. Well, I watched. I watched you make. Kind of helped. But this, when did this happen? This is amazing. Yeah. Tell me about this whole fish. So this is what I was telling you about. So yeah. this fish is farm raised, like sustainably out in the open ocean, um, down in Baja as well. So this is true Pacific snapper, huachinango. We deep fry it in potato starch. We coat it with a chili paste um, that was inspired from one in Oaxaca. We have a little, um, these are called tomatillo milperos. So they're these small tomatillos that aren't as sour. So we make a pico de gallo with those. Little sea beans, little herbs. And then we have this masa broth, yeah. which is fish stock and masa. This I've already tasted and loved it. But here it goes. So this is the... Yeah, the albacore tuna, you know, asada. So treat it like carne asada. That is so good. It is so, there's, I think what's so beautiful about the food here, it's so complex, but not in a fancy, stuffy way. Right. No. You know, let me see. Let me get a little, and I'll make a little taco. This is such a showstopper to come to the table too, right? Oh, 100%. Everybody loves it. Mm -hmm. That is so good, you guys. Thank you. Okay, what's going on over here? So this is our chingon margarita. Oh my uh, gosh. So it's a Palo Santo smoked margarita. So this is a Fuente Second, <laughs> a Fuente Seca seven year aged tequila. Okay. And the idea is that it's smoked with Palo Santo. Wow. So that's presented at the table like that. Mm. Pour this in. And there's gold leaf in there. Yeah, a flower. Beautiful. It's too fancy. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so smooth. Yeah. It is yeah, not absolutely. sweet. Yeah. It is not. We really wanted the tequila to speak wow, through the margarita. Wow, that is beautiful. Like I said when I walked in, my new favorite restaurant. Congratulations, <laughs> you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the food at Mirame is so good. It is packed with flavor, but also light at the same time because they use so much seafood. And if you want, you can get their specialty cocktails to go. I'm definitely going back to Mirame. <laughs> Coming up, it's one of Levi's favorites. We're making homemade fish sticks. Then it's a new limited time only fried chicken sandwich in LA that you gotta try. I'm telling you where to get it. But first, I'm cooking up a Greek inspired meatball sandwich that's coming up next. the easiest ways to jazz up ground meat is make a meatball. I've shown you Ari's favorite Italian meatballs. I've made a Vietnamese style meatball. Now we're going Greek. Check it out. Sometimes nothing hits a spot like a good yummy pita sandwich. And I'm gonna make a Greek inspired meatball and make some tzatziki sauce, some garlicky dill tzatziki and then I've already got some fries in the oven cooking up and I'll show you what I'm gonna top those with that'll just send them over the top. And that is a cheat. They're frozen french fries. You could do homemade, but if you wanna get dinner on the table fast, just go ahead and do the frozen french fries and then I'm gonna jazz them up. So first, to start with our meatballs, I have uh, some ground beef. You could do ground turkey, 80-20. Uh, so this one has a little bit more fat so it's not dry. And then I'm gonna finely chop some red onion. Red onion can be on the strong side, so you wanna make a pretty fine chop. You don't wanna get big chunks of it in your meatball. Onion going in. Some garlic, and I'm gonna grate our garlic. It's probably too close. To our garlic, 
some parsley, some fresh parsley, kind of a rough chop. Parsley in, it's probably a quarter cup of chopped parsley. Crack an egg, egg goes in. My favorite breadcrumb to use for meatballs is panko. I'm gonna do about a cup of breadcrumb. Hefty pinch of salt. And then this is where the flavorings are different than you'd make for an Italian meatball. Allspice. It's a warm spice, so it's not spicy. And it, it almost reminds me of a clovish, holiday-ish kind of a spice, but it's gonna be so interesting in our meatballs. So I'm just gonna do a teaspoon and then cumin, which I use in so much. Same thing, about a hefty teaspoon. I'm gonna zest a little bit of lemon, and I think lemon's just gonna lighten it up. And then a fork, because a fork helps keep the meat nice and light. A spoon might mash it up too much and you wanna keep things nice and light. All right. My one little trick in meatballs, ketchup. I like what ketchup does to a meatball. That's my little sneak. Okay, now, done. And let's make some meatballs. So I've got a cookie sheet, I lined it with parchment. You could use a ice cream scoop or something like that to make uniform meatballs, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. Here's my cheat, I made my mini meatball. I just took a little piece and fried it up just to make sure our seasoning is good, which really you would do before you form all the meatballs to make sure. Mmm, perfect. All right, I have some grapeseed oil and we're getting them in. Mmm, that is yummy. I was actually not sure. I thought, uh oh, I already made my meatballs, but perfect, okay. Now we let them cook, we brown them. And then we can also pop them in the oven the last few minutes to cook through, but this will give them a nice kind of crispy crunch around. Mm. While our meatballs are cooking, it takes about eight minutes, and those are medium size to large size meatballs. So if you made them smaller, they'd be even faster, but that's about eight minutes. I'm gonna make a topping for our pita sandwiches a tzatziki sauce, which tzatziki is yogurt and cucumber, lemon, garlic. So I'm gonna take a little Persian cucumber and just thinly dice it So into our bowl. And it'll give the sandwich a little crunch, so I like that. Some fresh chopped dill. I love dill so much. And I'm telling you, if you don't cook with dill, give it a try. And especially in a cool dip like this with yogurt and garlic. The dill is so fragrant. Dill goes in, I'd say a hefty tablespoon or two. Some fresh garlic. Because we're not cooking it, you might not wanna go more than a clove. It might be a little overkill. Our yogurt. So I'm using labni, some fresh lemon, a little bit of salt, pepper, done. Okay, topping done. Our meatballs are done. I think we are close to eating. Let me bring over our meatballs. Now, assembling our pita sandwiches. So I've got this lovely pita bread, and I'm going to probably cut a quarter of it off, save that for pita chips, and carefully then open the pocket because you don't wanna break it. That's the hardest part. Then, you don't have to do this step, but hummus. I'm gonna smear a little hummus in there. And then over here, I have sliced tomato. Put that in there. A little red onion slices. Some romaine lettuce. This will be lovely. Now, our meatballs are going in. Got one meatball. And by the way, I warmed these up in the oven just a couple of minutes, just to get them nice and warm. And we tuck our beautiful little meatballs in there. This is my favorite part, the tzatziki. This is a messy sandwich, but so worth it. Okay, 
Let me rest this guy here for a second. I can't forget about our fries. Gotta get our fries. And let me show you what I'm gonna do with these. We go to this restaurant where they put crumbled feta cheese on their fries. So that's what I'm gonna do. Some lemon zest and a little sprinkle of parsley. This is a dinner I could have every night of the week. I'm telling you. That sandwich hit the spot and the hack with the french fries, just some feta on top, so good. If you want the recipe, check it out on our Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. Coming up, forget the frozen kind. Levi and I are making homemade fish sticks and it's so easy. Then I'm tasting the newest fried chicken sandwich in LA. You gotta get it fast because it's only here for a limited time. That's coming up next. It's one of Levi's favorites, and I happen to admit, I love a good fish stick. But I never knew how easy it was to make fish sticks from scratch. Take a look. Hello. I already started recording. You're seasoning. Hey, Levi, do you know what we're gonna make? So we're gonna make fish sticks. I love it. So what we have here. The whole thing about fish sticks or breading anything is you have to have your breading station uh, set up. Can you give me flour? I need to All right. need it. Here's the flour. Uh, so you, you've got your flour. I need you to add something to the flour. Add some garlic, okay? We want to season every step. Can you add some garlic to this? And then I'm going to add, he washed his hands by the way, just so everyone knows. Okay, smoked paprika. Love smoked paprika. I put it in almost everything. Do me a favor, Levi, can you add some, I mixed two different kinds of breadcrumbs. There we go, plenty. So these are seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. This is full, it's overflowing. Then to our station, we're gonna add a pinch of salt to each thing, to the flour, to the breadcrumbs, to the egg. And Levi, you already got a good amount of pepper in the breadcrumbs, so let's add a little pepper to that and to the egg. Now, I need some help from you. I need you, I have three eggs in here. Will you whisk those up for me while I get the fish? Okay. So I have some halibut. It's too slimy. I know. Okay, let's take out our halibut and here's how we do our fish sticks, Levi. I'm just gonna cut these into finger-like strips. Levi, do you like fish? Um, yeah. I know, I do too. I'm so happy that you like fish. So basically you just take a sharp knife and cut them into finger-like shapes. This next step is a bit messy. So, you ready for it? Uh, I like messy stuff. Um, <laughs> I like messy. You don't have to tell me. So the first step, we flour the fish. Okay, because the flour helps the egg stick and then the egg helps the breadcrumb stick. So there's a purpose. There's a method to our madness. Just kind of toss it like that, Levi. And then when you're done with that, we're gonna drop it's it in ready, the egg. Ready. Okay. So what you do too, Levi, you shake to get the excess off. Okay, then we go into the egg and then into the breadcrumb. And try to keep one hand clean because this can get, and really your hands work the best. So go ahead and dip in the egg, good job. And then into the breadcrumb. Great, and twir twirl it around in there. All right, we've got our pan back here with some, I use grapeseed oil, but you can use vegetable oil, whatever your oil of choice. And you wanna make sure you see that sizzle right away because otherwise they'll just be greasy and not crispy. So I've got it on a medium heat. So I put the fish sticks in the oven, 375, just to cook all the way through because I don't want to burn them in the oil. So that way they can cook in the middle without getting too overdone. And for me, fried fish is all about the sauce you dip it in. So I'm gonna make a tartar sauce or a take on a tartar sauce. And right now I'm chopping up some fresh parsley and some fresh dill. Herbs going in, just a handful. I grabbed a handful mayo, 
fat tablespoon mayo. And then this is my new favorite thing. Oh, labneh. Two, I'm gonna go two tablespoons of that. Pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, some onion powder, touch of garlic powder, squeeze a lemon, and capers. And that's it. So much better than anything you could buy in the jar at the store already made. I'm telling you, and that was so easy. Sauce is done, tartar sauce is done. Now let's get our fish sticks out of the oven. Look at how good this looks. You ready to try? These fish sticks are delicious. Those fish sticks, a new weeknight favorite, and they're not at all like the ones you remember from your childhood. Okay, from fish sticks to fried chicken sandwiches, which have become all the rage lately, and now the newest one in town is from Hi Ho Cheeseburger. Here's the story. Here it is. Behold LA's newest fried chicken sandwich. Hi Ho Cheeseburger, based here in LA, has teamed up with one of the nation's top fried chicken spots in the country. According to the Food Network and the Travel Channel, it's called Willie Mae's Scotch House, and it's in New Orleans. The two places decided to join forces and create both restaurants first ever fried chicken sandwich. The new sandwich stars Willie Mae's juicy crispy fried chicken, and it's topped with Hi Ho's house-made pickles and a tangy slaw sauce. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I have tasted this chicken sandwich before, and man, is it good, but one more time. Why not? Mmm, it is so good. So if you wanna try one of these chicken sandwiches, gotta go to Hi Ho Cheeseburger. Available at Postmates, but only for a limited time. You gotta get one of those chicken sandwiches before it's too late. All right, that does it for us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. I'm telling you, those fish sticks from fried fish. Thanks for, that does it for us. What do you think? Have the together. What do you want? Have together. <laughs>